Hello world and welcome to WebDev Frontiers. My name is Tamás and I'm here to share my experience with you in web technologies. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at Node.js for the first time ever. I would like to show you a couple of features from Node.js that you may or may not be aware of. Some of the features that I'm going to highlight have been around for the past couple of releases in Node.js. But there are going to be a few that I'm going to show you that are currently experimental and are coming in future stable releases. So this is going to be a mix of videos. But the reason why I picked these features is because I found that a lot of times developers who I talk to are not fully aware of these features. So I thought I would collect a couple. So if you're ready, let's jump straight in. And the very first thing that I would like to start with is initializing a new Node.js project. And of course, once you have Node.js installed, NPM would also be installed. And a lot of people use NPM in it to initialize an empty project, which would then ask a couple of questions about how the project would look like, you know, some metadata, and that will create the package.json file. Now, I like to use a single line to do multiple things when I set up my initial Node.js projects, and I've copy pasted that inside the terminal right here. So the first command is of course going to be an npm init, but I have the dash y flag there to say yes to all the defaults. And therefore this npm init is not going to ask me any questions, just going to accept all the default settings. Then I have a semicolon, which is really, you know, it has nothing to do with Node.js. It's just a Unix command, which means once you finish running the first thing, then run this second thing. And I have npm package set type module. And the reason why I do this is because most of the time recently, especially, I am writing import export statements in my Node.js projects as well. And I want to make sure that instead of using the .mgs extension in Node.js to indicate something is a module, I would like the entire project to just use .js files. And so I'm opting in to use the ES modules syntax as opposed to the old require and module.export syntax in Node.js. And so with this one single line, if I hit enter, you will notice that I created the package.json file and the type automatically got set to module. So now I can use export and import statements and I can just still use the .js extension throughout my project. Next up, I would like to talk to you about the watch flag in Node.js. Now, often when it comes to running a Node.js application, you would start it up by saying node app.js, it would run and you would get something printed to the console and then the application closes. Sometimes when you're creating an HTTP server, which does not automatically shut down the node process, because it keeps on listening for incoming connections, you make a change in your code. What you need to do, you need to come back to the terminal, control C out from the running process and start the node process again. And that's not really a good way to develop your Node.js application because you will end up quitting and restarting the same Node.js process quite frequently. And so there are other projects out there like Nodemon, which basically allows you to watch certain files within your project. And then if there's a change detected in any of those files, the node process will restart. Now, Node.js has that capability built into it. And what you can do, you can type in node dash dash watch and then start your application up like this. As you can see, this is still experimental, but in my own experience, it has been working rather in a stable way. So I didn't have any issues with this. And every time you make a change inside your app.js file now, and you hit save, the process will automatically restart. And probably you're looking at my screen and you think, well, the value of pi is not really 3.13, it's 3.14. The reason why I have this is because I would like to show you what happens if you change something in a file which is just being imported. And the good news is it doesn't matter if you change something in app.js or in any of the imported files, the process again will restart and we're going to have the latest version now running. Now, this is all what the watch command does, but I'd like to use it because it's built in. If you want a little bit more robust solution, then I would recommend that you use Nodemon. And of course, in a production environment, you would have to use something a little bit more professional, such as PM2, which will allow you to keep on running your node process. And PM2 has lots of options. I'll put up a link in the video so that you can actually check them out and see what they do. 
A lot of times when you're developing something in Node.js, it's very likely that you're going to end up using some environment variables. And in order for you to use environment variables, probably use the package called .env or .env, and then you would require that, and then that would read all the values from a local .env file for your particular project. The good news is Node.js can do that without a third-party dependency as well. So let me create a .env file now. And let's just add a made up API key here and let's try to log this. And in order for the Node.js process to see the values found in the .env file, all we need to do is to specify the dash dash env dash file flag for the node process. And there you have it. Now the environment file is being read locally inside Node.js and we can access the values inside that environment file by doing process.env dot and then the appropriate keys. Furthermore, you can also specify multiple environment file options for Node.js. So let me create another EMV file. And this time around, I added another API key. Let's just try to log that as well. And of course, we need to restart the process. And what we need to do is just specify the same flag again. And there you go. Now you have both the API keys from the two local .env files. Now, one note that I would like to add here. Obviously, there are some system-wide environment variables that you have access to. And one example is the lang attribute. And let's just make use of the watch command as well, because I don't want to keep on stopping and starting my Node.js process. And notice that we have the lang attribute set to be enus utf8. Now, what if I take my .env file and I create a lang property here and I say this should be es, for example. And if we hit save, notice that, by the way, when you modify the .env file, your app.js process does not restart, but you can just come back to app.js, hit save there, and it will trigger a restart. Do notice that the lang value did not change. So essentially, it's critical to remember that if you have a system-wide environment variable, you cannot override that by using the .env files. In the last couple of versions of Node.js, you can also use both the top level await keyword as well as the fetch API natively. Now, before you had to install a package, maybe Node Isomorphic or Node Fetch or maybe use Axios, but there's no longer a need for that. And also top level await means you can just directly execute for example, a fetch API request without having to wrap that in an async function. And that's how it would look like. So I have a wait fetch, go out to a Star Wars API, convert that to JSON, which also returns a promise. So that's why you see the double await keywords in here. But notice there's no async function in here at all. And I'm just going to console log that out. So this is using top level await as well as the fetch API. So let's run this example. And then this should return us the Star Wars character, Luke Skywalker. The next example I would like to show you doesn't really have to do a lot with Node.js itself because it is more like a JavaScript feature, but the fact that Node.js has already implemented it is absolutely amazing. And it's going to be a really great feature and you will see why. So this feature is called array grouping. As I said, this is a standard JavaScript concept and it you know should be available in browsers hopefully fairly soon as well. But in Node.js, you can very safely run this code already because it has been implemented. So imagine that you have an array, in this case, an array of numbers, and then we use the group by method to specify how we would like to group the values found inside this particular array. And of course, we can give it any arbitrary label. So we're going to say, group these values inside my numbers array to a group of even and odd numbers, basically using this operation here. And then you will see once I log out the result that what we get back is an object where we have an odd and an even property, and then we have the numbers grouped accordingly, which is quite amazing. Now, of course, this is just a very simple example, but let me give you a more elaborate example. And to do that, I already added a data.js file, which basically contains information about 12 or 15 or so characters from the Harry Potter universe. So we get the name, we get the house, and we get a once type property for each of these characters. Now, what I would try to do now is group these characters according to their house. And I should be able to do this by using this new group by method inside Node.js. 
And this is how the code would look like. So I'm importing the data from my data.js file. Then I call group by data, pass the data to it, and then I use object destructuring to grab the value of the house. And that's what I'm going to be using for the grouping. And I'm just going to print this out real quick for you so that you, we're going to see how this looks like. And there we go. So we get a key for each of the houses. So we get Gryffindor here with all the characters belonging to the Gryffindor house. Then we get the next one, which is Slytherin, so on and so forth. Now, actually, we could do something really nice here just for presentation purposes. So let's do a for in loop, iterate through all the houses and then log the house and then take the house array of objects and then just display that as a table. So we're going to get a nice little output for this application. So there we go. So now we have the Gryffindor house table with all the Gryffindor characters, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and then Hufflepuff last. Again, just a kind reminder, this is not a Node.js feature. This is a JavaScript feature that has been already implemented in Node.js. One of the main criticisms that Node.js has received in the past couple of years were around the permission model that it has. And that's why a tool by exactly the same author who created Node.js, Dino, gets praises because it has a really strict permission model. In other words, in Node.js, I could go to the file system and I could open up a file, I could create a file to, into any location that I see fit. And of course, if you compare that with something like Dino, you need to explicitly give permissions to write something to the file system or read something from the file system or use the networking interfaces on the computer itself. And so if you think about an example like this one where you have a read file method to read a text file from Node.js, this is going to just work and you're going to get the content. Currently, there is an experimental feature in Node.js that allows us to work with permissions. So for example, we could fire up this app.js file and use these experimental permissions and you will see how things will change. So let's go ahead and do that. And immediately upon executing the statement, you will see that we have this error that says access to this API has been restricted. In other words, I cannot read anything from the file system. The way I can do that is if I launch the Node.js process by explicitly specifying that I want the file system module to allow read operations. And so what we're going to do is just add that. And I'm just going to add allow FS read asterisk. So I'm just going to allow reading anything from the file system. And if we run this, then of course, our code is now going to run and we get the usual experimental warning message. Now, let me mention one more thing. So let's try to run this node process with the dash dash watch command. Something very interesting will happen. We have the message that says access to this API has been restricted. That is because the dash dash watch command needs explicit permissions as well. And because we have the experimental permissions on, it is restricting us from essentially watching these files and watching our processes. So in order to have both watch and the experimental permissions, we need to add yet another flag. And that one is going to be called allow child process. And now that we edit that, we can successfully read the content of greeting.txt. And of course, if we make any changes, then the process will automatically restart for us. All right, so these were a couple of Node.js features that I wanted to point out for you. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any other features in Node.js, whether it's experimental or not, that you're using and you think they are cool and they are very useful and you have very specific use cases for it, then please let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like, do subscribe for more such content, and I hope to see you in the next one.